Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Courts Today by Live Law, your one-step destination for the latest and fastest legal updates. I'm your host Urvashi Chahan, bringing you day-to-day -day happenings, landmark judgments, crucial rulings and expert insights into the world of law. Starting with the biggest update for today, the Supreme Court has allowed the bail plea of former Delhi Deputy Chief Minister and Aam Admi Party leader Manish Sisodia in relation to the liquor policy case. The court has granted him bail in both the CBI and ED cases considering a delay in commencement of the trial. The judgment was pronounced by the bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and K.V. Vishwanathan. The court observed that with 495 witnesses and thousands of documents, the trial is unlikely to conclude soon. And keeping Sisodia in prolonged custody would violate his fundamental right to personal liberty under Article 21 of the Constitution. Reference was made to the recent precedents which held that investigating agencies cannot oppose bail, citing seriousness of the offence if they cannot ensure a speedy trial. The court said that Sisodia had deep roots in the society and hence was not a flight risk. Also, most of the evidence in the case are documentary in nature which have already been collected, hence there was no possibility of tampering. With respect to the apprehension of influencing or intimidating witnesses, the court said that conditions could be imposed. Significantly, while the court held that there was no error on the part of the trial court and the high court as regards merits of the matter, it held that they erred in not considering the aspect of delay in trial. The court said that the trial court and the Delhi High Court should not have ignored that prolonged incarceration and delay in the trial should be read into sections 439 of CRPC and 45 of PMLA. It stated that trial courts and high courts try to play safe in bail matters and have forgotten that bail is the rule and jail is the exception. The court has also observed that delay cannot be attributed to Sisodia and that he cannot be faulted for filing applications for inspection of the documents, including the unrelied documents of the prosecution, as they are necessary for ensuring fair trial. After the judgment was pronounced, additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju requested the court to impose certain conditions, like imposed in the Arvind Kejriwal case, that he should not visit the Chief Minister's office or the Delhi Secretariat. But the bench rejected this request. As bail conditions, the court has asked Sisodia to furnish bail bonds for a sum of 10 lakhs with two sureties of the like sum and to surrender his passport. He has also been asked to report to the investigating officer every Monday and Thursday between 10 to 11 a.m. To know more about this court and court's observation or background of this case, you can visit livelaw.in. In another important update from the Supreme Court, it today stayed the instruction issued by a private college in Mumbai banning wearing of hijab, cap or badges by students on campus. The bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Sanjay Kumar was hearing a petition filed by Muslim women students of NG Acharya and DK Marathe College of Mumbai. The petitioners approached the Supreme Court challenging the Bombay High Court's judgment delivered in June which had upheld the college's instructions. At the outset, the bench expressed surprise at the condition imposed by the college. It questioned the rule intended to hide students' religions and asked that whether the names of the pupils would not disclose their religion. Justice Kumar also questioned why this rule was introduced after many years of the college's operation, which started in the year 2008. When senior advocate Diwan argued that face covering niqabs or burqas hinder interaction, the bench agreed with this and said that face covering whales should not be allowed in class. So, it did not interfere with that part of the instructions preventing the use of nakab. Further, the bench issued a notice on the petition and clarified that the stay order should not be misused. The college can request changes to the order if misuse occurs. Coming to the latest development in the Krishna Jan Bhumi Shahi Idga Mosque dispute. The Supreme Court today extended the stay on the order of the High Court for inspection of the mosque by a court commissioner. The stay has been extended till November now. A bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Sanjay Kumar heard three special leave petitions. 
two were from Shahi Idga Mosque Committee and the Uttar Pradesh Sunni Central Waqf Board challenging a May 2023 Allahabad High Court order which transferred to itself cases regarding the dispute from Mathura Court. The third petition by the Mosque Committee challenged a December 2023 order allowing a court commissioner to inspect the Shahi Idga Mosque. Opposing the pleas, advocate Vishnu Shankar Jain on behalf of the deity and Hindu worshippers argued that the matter has become infructuous as the Allahabad High Court recently dismissed a plea filed by the mosque committee challenging the maintainability of 18 suits preferred by the deity Lord Krishna and Hindu worshippers. If you remember, the High Court on 1st August rejected the contention that the suits were barred by Places of Worship Act, Limitation Act or Specific Relief Act and held that all 18 suits were maintainable, paving the way for them to be heard on merits. But the Supreme Court disagreed with this argument that the matters had become infructuous and adjourned the matter till November, saying that the Allahabad High Court order will have to be gone into. I am sure each one of you watching this video must have felt a mix of disappointment and sadness over some of the recent events at the Olympics Games Paris 2024. Indian wrestler Vinesh Fogart made history by defeating defending world and Olympic champion Yui Susaki from Japan, marking Susaki's first international loss. Fogart then went on to beat Cuba's Yusnez Guzman 5-0 in the semi-final, ensuring at least a silver medal finish. However, her joy was short-lived as she was disqualified for being 100 gram overweight, nullifying her podium finish. Following this, Fogart announced her retirement from wrestling. Vinesh has now filed an appeal at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, Paris, seeking a joint silver medal in the sub-50 kg category. The ad hoc division of the court has registered her application. According to a press release by the court, an application was filed at the ad hoc division on 7th August by Vinesh in relation to the decision taken by United World Wrestling to replace her because of her failed second weigh-in before the gold medal match that was due to commence at the same day. Fogart initially asked the CS ad hoc division to overturn her disqualification and allow another weigh-in before the final match as well as to declare her eligible for the final. However, she did not request urgent interim measures. The press release states that while CAS ad hoc procedures are quick, a decision on the merits could not be made within an hour since the other party needed to be heard first. The process is still ongoing and Fogart is seeking the annulment of the disqualification and requesting to be awarded a shared silver medal. The arbitrator's decision is expected to be issued before the end of the Olympic Games, which are set to conclude on 11th August. Stay tuned. The Apex Court today dismissed a petition seeking to postpone the NEET postgraduate 2024 exam, which is scheduled for this Sunday. The petition was filed raising two primary concerns. First, that many NEET PG 2024 candidates have been allotted test centres which are inconvenient for them to reach. Second, that the exam is slated to be held in two batches and the normalization formula is unknown to candidates, which gives rise to apprehensions of arbitrariness. CGI D.Y. Chandrachud and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra refused to entertain the petition. Senior Advocate Sanjay Hegre, representing the petitioners, argued for conducting the exam in a single batch for fairness, but the bench was not inclined to agree. They highlighted that only 5 out of over 2 lakh students filed the petition, though Hegde claimed a broad support from about 50,000 students. The CJ emphasized the importance of certainty for all students and noted that rescheduling for a few could negatively impact many others. While acknowledging concerns about normalization, the CGI agreed that normalization may not be the perfect solution and that in a complex and diverse society, Practical solutions must be adopted. In the plea filed by news portal News Click for a stay on the income tax demand, the Supreme Court has directed that as long as the appeal is pending before the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, there shall be a stay of further recovery of the outstanding amount. This order was passed taking into consideration that approximately 30% of the demand has been recovered. 
The division bench of Justices B.V. Nagratna and N. Koteshwar Singh was hearing an SLP filed by News Click against the Delhi High Court's order, which rejected a stay on the income tax demand. The background here is that News Click had applied to postpone an income tax demand while appealing an earlier assessment decision from December 2022. In February and November 2023, tax authorities rejected this application and instructed News Click to pay 20% of the demand before reapplying for a stay. News Click then appealed to the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, which agreed with the tax authorities and refused to grant any stay. News Click filed a writ petition with the Delhi High Court then, but it was dismissed. After this, the present SLP was filed before the top court. And lastly, Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik today informed the Delhi High Court that he will argue in person and defend himself in the appeal moved by National Investigation Agency seeking death penalty for him in a terror funding case. Malik was awarded a life sentence in the case by the trial court in May 2022. He had pleaded guilty in the case and did not contest the charges against him. Malik was produced today from Tihar jail through VC. He informed the bench that he himself argued his case before the trial court and was produced physically there by NIA till he was convicted. That no law and order situation happened before the trial court during his productions and that NIA's refusal to do the same in the high court was against his right to fair trial. When the bench of Justices Suresh Kumar Keth and Girish Katpalia asked Malik if he wanted to file a reply to the appeal or written statement with relied upon case laws and documents, he said that he needed some time to think about it and would inform the court on the next date of the hearing. Accordingly, the matter was adjourned and will now be heard on 15th September. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.